everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new my name is janice today i put together some halloween diys the first part is going to be cute diys and the second half will be the creepy diys this first one i grabbed from dollar tree is a huge haunted house but we're going to make it into a fun house so the first thing i want to do is paint it i'm also going to use the small haunted house i used it before and i'm going to paint both of them I'm going to start off by painting it with the aqua color, the large haunted house, or the fun house, and then the small one's going to be a light blue. So this is what it looks like once it's painted. Now I'm going to take some black craft paper and I'm going to be placing some craft paper behind the windows. I also went ahead and painted that little fun house, the powder blue color. So all I'm going to do is take that craft paper and glue it to the back of the fun house, just little pieces to cover up those windows. So now I'm going to use this from Dollar Tree. It's like cardstock with little characters on it. I cut out the cat. All I'm going to do is use a glue stick to place them down. Now if you don't have rub on you can always use this. Dollar Tree has it now at the store. So I'm just going to cut out the boo word and cut as close as I can. And then I'm going to place it down on the funhouse. This gives you an option what you can do if you don't have like a Cricut or any rub-ons. You can always use something like this to decorate your funhouse. I'm going to be using some Dollar Tree rub-ons. I got these last year. I'm not sure if they carry it this year because my Dollar Tree has not put out any Halloween stuff yet. Uh, but I'm sure they probably will, so just keep your eye out for any of these rub-ons. These are great to have. Now I'm just going to place the spider on top of the funhouse. Now I'm just going to place down that little eye. I took it off that cardstock, and you can decorate these any way you want. Now I'm going to place down the boo, and I use the glue stick to place it down. Like I said, you can decorate these any way you want, any color. I chose this color, and I chose to use these little cardstock characters and some of the rub-ons. I'm also going to be using different type of rub-ons. These I also got last year from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut out the bat and I'm going to start applying some to the little fun house. These are a lot of fun to decorate. You can use imagination. You don't have to use rub-ons. You can do anything you like to these little signs. I think they're adorable. They're perfect for Halloween. I want to make a little broom, so I'm grabbing this secure stick that I got from Dollar Tree. All I'm going to do is take this black marker and just mark the end of it because I don't need to paint it. It's so tiny, a black marker is just fine and then I'm going to take some raffia and bundle it at the end and tie it off with a piece of raffia to make a cute little broom. So I'm taking the raffia, I'm gathering it all together and it's going to place it right on top of that little secure stick and like I said I'm going to wrap it with a piece of raffia. And that's pretty much it. It's really easy to make these little brooms. They're so adorable. You can add it. Like I said, you can add anything you want in front. You can use your Cricut if you have a Cricut. But I thought adding the little broom would look adorable with the fun house. Now I'm taking my white marker and I'm just going to write out the word that says eek inside of the window. I'm also going to write the word boo inside the other window. To make it stand I'm just going to place a jingle block in back, hot glue it, because the other one already has a stand. So that's basically it and this came out super cute, super fun to make, and adorable for Halloween.
Next up, we're going to take this Dollar Tree sign. I got this around Halloween last year and the boo cutout and the ghost. So I'm going to start off by painting that little boo cutout and I'm going to start off with the orange. I'm going to be placing some stripes along the boo sign. Some are going to be white, some are going to be orange, and some are going to be black. Now I'm taking the ghost, I took it off the stand, and I'm just going to be painting it with some white paint. Now I'm going to place everything on that board and just use some hot glue to place everything down. So now I want to add some dots. I'm grabbing some white paint and a little sponge from Dollar Tree. Just creating some dots with some white paint and some orange paint. I want to add a little bow. I'm grabbing some Dollar Tree Halloween ribbon and just going to cut two little pieces, tie them together, and place it at the top of the sign. This was such a cute little project. Very easy to make. Cute for Halloween. Gives you an idea what you can do with these Dollar Tree wood signs and just make it really cute or you can make it scary either way but I thought it was adorable. This DIY, I'm grabbing these Dollar Tree wood cubes and some craft paper from Hobby Lobby. I also use my Cricut. What you're going to need is some pages from a book. I'm just going to tear out one page. Now I'm going to be using black paint and I'm just going to paint on the outside edges of all three because inside I'm going to be placing some craft paper. Now I already cut out a little piece of that book in a little square. I'm going to use it as a guide because I need to cut out two more pieces and then I'm going to do the same thing with the other craft paper. Now to place it down I'm just going to use a little bit of the Mod Podge and that's what I'm going to be using on all the craft pieces. Now I'm going to grab that polka dot paper and do the same thing. It's going to be on three sides and then the yellow craft paper is just going to be on the top of each block. So I use my Cricut and I'm placing down the vinyl letter that's a B. Now if you don't have a Cricut you can always use Dollar Tree letters. They have so many selections. So that's what I'm going to do is place it right over the book paper on all three wood cubes. Now I'm going to be using these rub-ons from Dollar Tree that I got last year. Just going to place down the little spider on the B cube and then a bat and I think another spider just to give it a little more Halloween look to it. I think it's so cute as it is. Now I'm grabbing these little wooden thimbles or caps from Hobby Lobby. They come in a pack. I'm just going to paint it black. Now I'm going to place it right on top with a little bit of glue and that is it. Look how adorable this came out. So simple. You can use any type of cardstock or not, or you could just paint it. You can do so many things with these little wood blocks. And I think this came out so stinking cute for Halloween. All 
All right, for this one, we're going to grab this. It's like a little glass frame from Dollar Tree and some scrap paper or craft paper from Hobby Lobby, fairy lights, and I use my Cricut. So I'm just going to take it apart. There's two glass pieces inside. So I'm just going to grab one and place it on top of the craft paper so I can use it as a guide. Now I'm going to be using these adhesive dots that I got from Dollar Tree to place down the fairy lights on the glass. So all you do is take the top part of the foil off and place it on top of the glass. And this way it holds the little fairy lights in place. So I'm going to go ahead off camera and place down the fairy lights with the little sticky dots. Um, it's really quite easy to place down. You can use scotch tape or any type of tape, but I didn't have any scotch tape. So I thought I used the little dots. They're really easy to use and they hold very well. Now I'm going to place the glass piece down first and then the craft paper right on top. Then I'm going to place the fairy lights with the glass piece right over the back piece. And I'm going to cut a piece of craft paper just to place it in the back so that's not open. Like you can't see the fairy lights, you know what I'm talking about? Or you can use like a piece of cardboard. Now I'm putting everything back together. Now I'm going to start placing down the Cricut vinyl words that I created. And I think this came out so cute. I love everything I made today. But I really love this one, how it came out. So now I'm just going to place down the word that says sleepy and then hollow. Placing down the little moon and the horse right in the middle. I went ahead and placed down the little tiny words that says establish 1820, I think it says. Um, I had to do that off camera because it was so tiny and I had such a hard time with the little tiny vinyl. Sometimes they don't want to come off the transfer tape. But anyways, I'm going to place down the little horse and the moon. Now I'm going to grab this material. It's fabric from Dollar Tree. It's like a table runner and I'm just going to place a little piece at the bottom of the sign. I'm just going to cut it and then place it down with a little bit of hot glue. Off camera I did add a little tiny thimble. It's like one of those little wood thimbles to the top. I just painted it black and glued it to the top. And I think this came out super cute. I love the way it came out. I'll show what it looks like with the lights on and with the lights off. All right, this one, and we're going to grab a Dollar Tree Haunted House. I got this last year, and I used it, and I grabbed a yardstick from Home Depot and some gauze from Dollar Tree. Now, I want the Haunted House to have some type of texture, so I'm just going to use a few pieces of the gauze. Just going to place a few pieces on the Haunted House with a little bit of the Mod Podge. I'm going to be using some Dollar Tree popsicle sticks. I'm just going to cut them down to size so I can place them on the corners of the window. So I'm just going to add a few to the little windows um, and then I'm going to start painting it. Now this is optional. You don't have to place popsicle sticks around the window frame, but I wanted my haunted house to have some texture and some creepy windows. Now I'm going to be taking some white and black paint. Just going to go over the haunted house with these two colors, mix them together just to give it that effect that I'm looking for. All 
And here's how it turned out. Now I'm going to grab these envelopes. These are from Dollar Tree um, when I got some cards there and I just saved the envelopes. Just going to cut a few pieces and I'm going to place them behind the windows. Now you can use any type of fabric behind it or any type of craft paper or any color. I just went with the orange. I thought it looked good with the black and white. Now for the middle part of the windows, I decided to use this fabric. This is the fabric that I got from Dollar Tree. It's like the Halloween Black Runner. So I just cut a few pieces and just hot glued it to the back. mini pumpkin and I didn't want to paint it so I'm just going to take that fabric and just wrap it around the pumpkin just hot glue the bottom So I'm going to take these ribbons, I got these from Dollar Tree, I'm just going to cut out the little picture that says rip and I'm going to place that right at the front door. I love using these little rub-ons. They're so adorable. You can place them anywhere and it makes something come to life and gives it color. And especially for Halloween, this is the, my favorite part of Halloween, using these rub-ons. Now I'm just going to take that little pumpkin and place it in the corner. Now I'm going to place the ghost in the corner. So I went ahead and cut that yard stick and painted it gray. Now I'm going to take a jingle block, place it in the middle, and hot glue the haunted house to the jingle block. Now I'm going to place the pumpkin on the side with a little bit of glue, and I'm going to grab a spider, a Dollar Tree spider, and place that down on the other side. So I'm going to be using some Dollar Tree moss and I decided after the fact. So I'm just going to place a little moss around the front, around the pumpkin, and around the spider. I decided to add some spider web, some of that web from Dollar Tree. Just going to string some around the haunted house, around the pumpkin, and around the spider. And that is it. Look how cute and spooky this came out. Now, you can add lights to this. I decided not to add lights, but I did put a changing tea light behind it. And it looks so awesome. I will show you what it looks like. I think it came out amazing. I did add a little skeleton with no head just sitting in front of the haunted house to make it more spooky. this is going to be the last DIY. I grabbed this frame from Dollar Tree. It had a picture sign in there. I just took it apart. I got these eyes from Michael's 
and I'm going to be using some red yarn and some gauze. I'm also going to be using some flora wire. I'm going to start off by painting the frame with some black paint. So I'm going to take the little eyeballs and grab some gauze and I'm going to wrap some gauze around the outside of the eyeballs to make it look like, I don't know, skin, like it was ripped out of the socket. I know it sounds gross, but this is Halloween. So I'm just going to place a little piece around the eyeball with some Mod Podge. Now I'm going to grab those red pieces of yarn and kind of like spread them apart to make it as thin as possible because I want them to look like the veins or the red veins in the eyes. So I'm just going to place a few right over the eyeball with some Mod Podge. I know it's creepy, but you guys wanted spooky, creepy stuff. So here you go. These are the eyeballs that came out of the socket. Wait till the end. It came out pretty cool. Now I don't have any blood, so I'm going to grab some food coloring and some Mod Podge to make some blood. So I'm just going to place it in a little container and mix it together and just kind of like use a paintbrush to go over the back part of the eye socket and add some blood to it. I did add a little bit of glue to make it a little thicker because the gauze wasn't thick enough. You can see the back part of the eyeball. I made a thick piece of the regular glue gun and because I needed to look like it pulled out of the socket. So I didn't show it, but I just added some layers of the hot glue to the back of it. So I'm just adding a lot of layers of that red blood um, to make it look as gross as possible. And then I painted and I need to drill two holes because I'm going to be hanging the eyeballs on a hook. So I'm just going to take the drill and place two holes at the top of the frame. Now because I don't have hooks, I'm going to make a hook out of some floral wire. Just going to bend it and hook it at the end, curve it, and then place it in the hole and twist it so it's nice and tight at the top. I hope you guys are enjoying this video so far. If you are, please let me know if you have a favorite. And also, don't forget, I have a collaboration coming on the 31st of August. It's with Indy Annie Jones. You don't want to miss that one, so make sure you hit the notification bell. Now I have the hooks made. I'm going to grab the eyeball. And that's the reason why I had to make it really thick at the end so the hook can go through it. So I'm just going to place the hook through the meat part, so to speak, and let that hang. And then I'm going to do the other side, the other one off camera. And this is what it looks like. So creepy, but so cool. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Till next time, guys, I will see you. Bye-bye.